Hey everybody, welcome back. So I'm doing a quick review of the new Blue Underground release of Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery, which hopefully you can see that okay. I know uh, there's some glare and obviously with the lenticular cover, it doesn't show up as well on camera. So as I've mentioned before, I'm a huge Lucio Fulci fan, so always happy to get a new release of one of his films. And House by the Cemetery is sort of an interesting one because it was made, in my opinion, sort of during his heyday. You know, it was during that time frame where he did Zombie and Gates of Hell, City of the Living Dead, but you know, I prefer the title Gates of Hell. The Beyond, New York Ripper, you know, it was in that time frame in there. And House by the Cemetery is interesting because I think it has elements of both Zombie and The Beyond, you know, sort of has some of the more visceral elements of zombie, but some of the sort of supernatural and atmospheric elements of the beyond. Because, you know, it's basically sort of a haunted house and monster movie all in one. I know sometimes this one is a little bit mixed among Fulci fans. Um, I've always been a fan of it. I mean, I'm basically a fan of almost all of his films, I think, that I've seen. And I know some people sort of make fun of the fact that, you know, the way uh, Bob, the, the kid in the film, is sort of dubbed over with this sort of semi-annoying voice. But I don't know. It doesn't bother me, I think, because I'm just so used to watching Italian films and with, you know, all the various dubbing and everything. And I actually did meet Bob, uh, not too long ago, uh, Giovanni Frezza, super, super nice guy. And the thing is too, is Italian films are very hard to restore. You know, I mean, not all the films that uh, were made in Italy, you know, I mean, like you can point to some, like Suspiria as a prime example, where it was actually filmed on really, really good film stock. That's why that film can look so amazing. But a lot of other films just weren't you know they were shot on film stock that was very very grainy and when prints were made they would lose a lot of color and everything so a lot of times i think these films sort of get maligned uh, unjustly because they're basing it off of you know inferior prints that were done for the films and everything and, you know especially as far as sometimes the look of them goes now house by the cemetery though um and, and unless some of you can sort of correct me wrong, um, I think it has always sort of fared a little bit better than some of Fulci's other films as far as uh, presentation on home video goes. Like Zombie has always had kind of a mixed look. Same thing with The Beyond, uh, Gates of Hell. At least in my opinion, I've always felt that House by the Cemetery has fared better than some of the other films. And I think it really shines here. Now, it, that might also be why I wasn't as blown away as like when I watched uh, like the more recent release of Zombie, for example. Like when I watched that, um, that restoration, uh, or New York Ripper or Manhattan Baby, you know, it was a much more like, wow, what a difference. This one wasn't the same, but I think it actually, because it lends itself to, it's always kind of at least looked, you know, kind of decent on uh, other releases. Now, the previous Blue Underground release and the Arrow release, I believe, used the same master. Um, you know, they both sort of, I think, color corrected it themselves. And of course, now Blue Underground had access to the original negative. So it, I mean, it does look amazing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, again, this is one of a case where, again, it's a grainy film. It's, you know, had always been slightly washed out. Uh, the grain is there, but it's very much, it's manageable. It's intact. So you don't lose the detail in the image. And the color is especially looks really really good and when a transfer is done right obviously like this you know being transferred from the negative in 4k uh and i believe they also have made you know uh new dcps for it to be shown in theaters and stuff and the audio sounded really good in fact there were a couple times where it actually maybe sounded too good actually and it has the original english mono mix it has the original italian mono mix and it does have a remixed 5.1 surround mix as well which i believe was also on the last release and yeah they sound really good and luckily all the previous extras have been ported over and it does actually have a couple new interviews and a new commentary track it's not just a simple re-release plus it does come with a cd of the soundtrack score which i'm really happy about i love it when releases can can have the soundtrack with it and as i was trying to point out on camera before of course it has the lenticular cover it doesn't quite show up as well on camera and it really reflects light. But just like their other releases with lenticular covers, I mean, it just looks so cool in person. Although the lenticular cover is limited. I think only the first pressing is going to have it. Otherwise, it's just going to be uh, just a regular three disc. And yes, I did reverse this because it does have the original poster artwork 
on the inside. So I know it's another double dip, which we are getting, you know, I think quite a lot of lately, but as far as quality goes, you know, this is the kind of thing where I'm okay to double dip when the quality is there. And the quality is definitely there. This new Blue Underground release of House by the Cemetery is uh, really impressive. And it really joins like all their other releases that they've done within the last, what, two years or something? You know, especially the other Fulci films that they've done. So if you're a fan of Fulci, like I am, and definitely a fan of House by the Cemetery, this is for sure the release to get. So those are just some of my quick thoughts on this release. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.